this video, we're going to just do a brief overview of thermodynamics. So the first equation you're going to look at is Q equals Cm delta T, which quantifies how much heat is transferred to an object. So the amount of heat transferred is going to be equal to the specific heat of the material, which is different for any material. It's how much energy it takes to raise one gram of a substance by one degree Celsius or Kelvin times the mass of that substance that you have and the change in temperature. And we can use this to measure energies of reactions or energy being transferred. And we can even use it to measure specific heats of materials based on how we know energy will transfer between things. All right, then we have reactions and their energy diagrams for these reactions. These two reactions right here, one is exothermic, that's this one, and this is endothermic. When a reaction is exothermic, that means that it releases energy during the process. So the potential energy of the products is lower than that of the reactants, and you can see that here. So that delta H represents the enthalpy, or essentially the energy change of a reaction. You can also see right here that there's typically an energy barrier that has to be overcome. That's known as the activation energy, or the energy required to break the bonds that are already there before the new bonds form. All right. So for an endothermic process, you can see that it goes the other way. You have a higher energy for the products than you do for the reactants, and the activation energy is typically a bit higher for them. And that's why typically most reactions that occur spontaneously are ones that are exothermic that have a release in energy. And the last thing that we looked at in thermo was um, heating curves. So for any material, it's going to start off at its lowest kinetic energy state, it's going to be a solid, and then it will be a liquid, and then it will be a gas. And you have transition periods between those phases. So right here we start off as a solid, so below the melting point you have a solid. As you're adding energy, that solid will heat up, basically vibrating faster, until it reaches its melting point. At which point, energy will still be continue to be added, but the temperature doesn't change until all of the material has converted itself into a liquid. At which point, you can then use Q equals Cm delta T to quantify the heat being transferred as its temperature is changing. So before we get to the liquid phase, from the solid phase, we have this heat of fusion. Okay, and for water, that's 333 joules per gram. All right, then once you get up to the boiling point, notice the temperature doesn't change. If you put a thermometer in boiling water, it doesn't change at all. You're still adding energy, but the temperature is not rising. So that heat of vaporization is the energy required to convert that substance from a liquid to a gas. And then once it's all a gas, you can heat it up again. So essentially you can think of this as showing anywhere where you see a slope that you have the kinetic energy increasing. At any point where you see a flat line, you're increasing the potential energy by overcoming intermolecular forces and giving them more separation between the molecules or freedom of motion. All right, I think that's it.